custom mini quad, and this thing's got a sweet Tillotson 212 on it from Go Power Sports with electric start. And so we're thinking about the electric start, and we thought if we used a wireless momentary switch, we could have push button remote start on this thing. And so we bought one from Amazon, it was 15 bucks. We're gonna show you how to install it. It's pretty quick and easy. And so if you have a electric start Predator or Tillotson or whatever, you can do this too. So this is our switch we got from eMilo. It's on Amazon, on Amazon Prime, so you can get it really quick. And there's a number of reasons why this switch is great. So this is a 12 volt switch, so it will work with all Predators. And it can handle 10 amps of current, so it should work with nearly every starter solenoid for any small engines. It is also only $15, so it's a great, cheap, kind of novelty upgrade you could do to any of your builds. This switch has a couple different modes you can use. We have a single button remote, and it can do jog or toggle. So if you hold it down, the switch will turn on, and when you release it, the switch will turn off. Or you can do click it, and it's on, and click it, and then it turns off. So for us, we're gonna be wanting to use jog mode, and right now I'll just give you all a detailed tutorial, giving you every step of how to install this on your build. First things first, we have our instructions, which shows us everything. Uh, in Italian, so let's switch that over. So I will be giving a detailed instructions on specifically the eMilo system, but this is pretty general, so you know, hopefully you can take what I do for this guy and apply it to any other sort of transmitters you get. I do recommend this one because I did test it out. It does work, and it's only $15, so it's pretty great. But um, yeah, so the first step is we have to pop off this back casing. So it just comes out and we have our transmitter here. So you know this is pretty simple. We got an antenna, relay, wire connections. It's pretty straightforward to see what you need to do. So the way that this is set up, the problem would be that if you wanted to have a remote start, you would have to give up your thumb start. You couldn't start it on the bike. You could only remote start. So I did a little bit of changing and now the way we're gonna be setting it up, it will work. You can remote start it or start it normally. Both are gonna work. It's gonna be great. So this far right, wire is going to be positive to the battery. So I went ahead and cut some wires already so this should be pretty quick. So yes, we're just going to screw this in tight and this blue wire is going to go to the positive. Next we have the negative of the battery. And that goes right next to it. So these two wires are going to supply power to the transmitter and that's really their only purpose just to supply power to the transmitter. Now our next two wires, these two are the ones that are gonna be connected together. So basically, when you click the button and the transmitter switches, you're you know connecting these wires, you know, just like a switch. So we will screw these guys in. All right, so it's pretty simple. You know, just four wires going into four slots. Uh, nothing too fancy or anything. So now we can hook this up to power and see if it, you know, clicks. So these controllers may or may not come pre-programmed from the factory, so I will just show you all how to program it. We're gonna be programming it for jog mode, which means when you press the button down, the wires are connected, and when you release, the wires are disconnected. There's another mode that you can set on these, which is called latched mode, and that's you press it and it's connected, and then you press it again and it disconnects. But that's not super useful because then you press it and you're just cranking for infinity. So here we go. So for the eMilo, there's a little button down here, back in there, and you can just hold that down. And this is the programming button. It'll turn red, just keep holding it, and it will flash green red. So here we go. Green red. Okay, now you can let go. So that means it's in jog mode. If you wanted to go into latched, you would just wait for it to go green, red, green, red. But we're just letting it blink once. And now you're gonna hold down again, and that will set it. Okay, so now that it's holding red, you will hold down the button on whichever controller you wanna program. And now that it flashed, it's working. So yeah, if y'all can hear that, Yeah, it's working perfectly. So, whenever the buttons are pressed, these two wires are connected. And I will prove that to y'all with the multimeter. 
So we'll put this over, continuity, and see, whenever these wires are connected, it beeps. So we'll hold this to each end, and then we can press the button, and we should hear a beep. So now that we have this all tested, we know it works, and we can start trying to install it on our ATV. This is pretty simple. Our ATV is not charging the battery currently. You would need to add a rectifier for that. So we don't have the rectifier, we're actually getting one as we speak. But for now, all of this wiring is gonna work just as stands. But keep in mind that if you're gonna want it to really function well, you'd wanna add a rectifier so you can start charging your battery when you use it. Actually check out Redbeard's channel, he is a great tutorial on how to set up the rectifier with two coils so you're pumping up three amps to charge your battery. Okay, so here's the main section of our wiring. Sorry it's a little bit messy, but you know, this is an old build. So we have our main power wire coming from the battery, which goes to one side of the solenoid, and then we have another one coming from the solenoid, and this is gonna power the starter switch. So this goes up to the starter switch, and this wire comes right back to power the starter switch. So you got one coming here, switch contacts them, goes into there and then we have a ground coming from there. Your starter may or may not have a ground wire. And then over here we have the ground for the kill switch, which goes back into here to the kill switch, which comes up from the top. And then we have the negative going from the battery to the engine. So what we're gonna do is very simple. This wire right here, we're gonna want this wire to be powered by either the button or the remote switch. So all we're gonna have to do is cut off this spade connector and then you know, we can really quickly add in one more wire to that same connector and that'll be it. So we got both of our wires going into here, crimp these together and um, ooh, let me just make sure this is a good crimp. So yeah, we got these crimped together. I'll heat shrink, shrink this in a bit, but both of these wires are now gonna plug in to the power for the starter solenoid. So just a little recap, we have our positive coming from the battery right here that goes up to your starter switch, which goes back down and will power the switch for the starter solenoid. So what we're gonna do, or what we're doing is tapping in to the same plug so you can either get power from here or from there. So you know, once this is plugged in, you basically have two options for power there. And then with this switch, this will connect to the positive of the battery and then that will power it whenever the relay is powered. So we have everything mocked up and we're about to test it. I'll just go through it one more time. So we have positive from the battery, negative from the battery, and another positive from the battery, which is then connected to here, which connects to our switch. So whenever we press the button, should fire. Boom, Ooh. easy. So yeah, um, we just have to package this up. We have a nice top plate right here, so we can use these two screws and just bolt it up right there. Um, for testing purposes, I'm probably just gonna kind of zip tie some stuff up. It won't look super pretty, but we'll go, you know, pull it up, put it 30 feet away and see how it does. All right, guys, so now we're gonna do kind of a little range test. So one thing we realized about this is that it's kind of not the most practical, because when you start an engine with the choke on, which you're gonna need to do with your go-karts, the engine kind of sputters and dies after a while. So yeah, if we're gonna see if it starts from here. This is pretty far. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really want to stay alive, but, but it, I mean, it's still running and that would be definitely warming up for you. We're going a little bit farther now. So now I'd say we're probably like 100 feet away. No, how many feet do you think? Yeah, maybe 100, maybe like 150, 200 feet. Okay. I'm gonna try and not start it so we don't have to wait for it to die every time. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, I say this is a good 250 feet. <laughs> this is actually pretty cool. It's still running. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. All right, so now we are, I don't even know how many feet this is. This is like, really far like this is more than the range on my my start on my car like you don't even you don't need that <laughs> yeah i guess we keep going this thing works <laughs> this thing works pretty good <laughs> yeah until like the choke flips and it just takes off at us okay 
At this point, I think uh, that's like a football field, it seems like. Zoom out the camera all the way so they can see exactly what we're kind of seeing. It still works. <laughs> Are we just gonna go? Let's go as far as we can. Okay. Let's go miles if we have to. Yeah. We're gonna run <laughs> You might be able to start this thing from the next city over. Yeah. It's flown. Take it stop. Well guys, um, currently it's still running and it won't die. So I guess at this point, you know, <laughs> Alright guys, at this point, you know, it was pretty successful. It was a lot of fun to do. You know, it was definitely a little bit gimmicky. But, I mean, it's a proof of concept. It works. And, you know, if you started from this far away, your go-kart will be warm by the time you get there. No. Alright. Probably like four I'd say four hundred feet's the limit.